in in Aaron's one is she oh yeah she, she she popped out yeah so hopefully we're all good hello everybody we are alive we are super super excited so to be chatting with Teddy Hamilton aka Andrew Iden did I say that right yes okay perfect you do do you have any other pen names no that's it okay. I'm guess- I'm uh I'm starting to test the waters of my writing abilities and i was thinking i would my pen name would be td hamilton (laughs) we'll see (laughs) i say i've been saying i'm gonna write for like years now but it it actually requires you to sit down and actually write so Mm. (laughs) that's the problem it does (laughs) do you call it a pen name though if a narrator has multiple names you call like a pseudonym 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 yeah that's the the go-to okay all right well we are here because we love your works both as teddy and as andrew and to start off we were going to share some of our favorite audiobooks that you've narrated so (laughs) you've you've narrated a lot just under teddy is over 600 in the audible library i know you've been narrating for 10 years now I did my first book in 2012, okay. um, just as Andrew, um, but but Teddy came pretty quickly, actually. I think I, I think maybe like 2013 or 14 was my first okay. Teddy book, so. A decade. He's been with me. <laughs> oh, Teddy, uh, a yeah. long time. <laughs> a decade. Um, okay, Kelly, do you want to share? Are you ready? You want to share <laughs> one or two? Yes. Yeah. Um, I listen to a lot of small town romance and I feel uh-huh. like you do a lot of small town romance. You're on one of my favorites, which is Call Me Crazy by Melanie Harlow, which is oh, yeah. The- yeah, yeah. her Bellamy Creek series. I love Melanie. You did Irresistible from her also. I think you've yeah. done a lot of Melanie, maybe. I've had a couple of hers, yeah. Yeah, I love her books on audio. So that I love that series on audio. And then also, I did not realize until I looked, like, just to confirm, because I listen to a lot of audiobooks. So I'm like, what is Teddy on? I didn't realize that you did from Luke Off with Love. And I love oh, yeah. audiobook. It is mm-hmm. such a good audiobook. Like, 10 out of 10. Any yeah. Mariana's audiobook on audio is beautiful, but that one was, was so good. That one was, I think, it was early. It was, you know, the the... It was my first experience doing a, a duet narration. Ooh, okay. um, so me and Callie um, did that one together. And that that was, it, it, either, it was either that one or Dear Aaron. Um, mm-hmm. But I think we did them pretty close together. So it was, it was part of my first uh, introduction to duet. Um, but yeah, it was also sort of the beginning stages in the, Earlier on, like years and years ago, you could only do duet if it was a really high priced job with a lot of money going into it and like in a big studio. And that was one of the earlier that was my first experience, but also starting to see like ways that technology was now making it so that we could do these duets in a way that worked (laughs) that that one in particular, me and Callie were crammed into a very tiny little booth together. Um, so it was a little awkward because it was just like, hi, hello. That's <laughs> real intimate for a second. Um, but, you know, I, I've known her for years and so we were comfortable. Mm-hmm. But now can't you do it just like over Zoom? Yeah, now there's there's a couple different ways that they do it now where one is, and you can probably hear it too, the difference where one is where we yeah we're just listening to each other and we're working off of each other me and uh shane east just did uh the whole romance series for lauren blakely all all over zoom together and that's that's more fun because you know there's interplay it's like doing scene work with somebody where you're actually you know i can actually respond to the way in which they said it so that if if say Shane in this case has some take that I wouldn't have otherwise anticipated uh, from just the text because he's adding his, you know, vibe to it that then I can respond to that so that then it all feels very alive for the listener. That's nice. There's also a little bit more of a, of a blind duet where I'm just Mm -hmm. reading 
I'm just reading, you know, the, the dialogue, which I, it still works because there's only so many, you know, the, the information is in the text itself. So uh, assuming nobody's doing anything super wild or crazy with their lines, you can, you can assume that their, their intentions are what is in the text already. So, mm -hmm. uh, and so Luca yeah. would love, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think it was Aaron that was talking about, do you like send clips to the other narrator of like how you speak for certain characters so that they are speaking yeah. kind of like similar to you in their chapters? Yeah. Um, you, you, you sort of need to, because especially if you, if you're working with another narrator who may alter their vibe, you know, put, to match the character, you want to know what, they're doing because especially if it's not duet if it's just dual just basic you know chapter chapter breakdowns and i'm going to be voicing her character or his character a bunch of times i want to know that i'm at least capturing close to it there's some that i that i i was never told who my other narrator was oh that's that's happened before so i didn't know who it was mm -hmm. so then i just like did the you know, did the other, did the character the way I, I, I read it on the page. And then I would find out later, oh, that was, that was that person. I would have read that completely different if I'd known that it was, you know, this other, this narrator. Um, so yeah, it's important. It's important that, that you at least share or that, you know, this is a thing Aaron Mellon was saying too, which is after a while you do get that shorthand where if I'm working on an Aaron Mellon book, I know Aaron, she's a good friend of mine. So like, I don't need I don't need her to send me what she is because I can hear her already in my head. Mm -hmm. And you have one coming out with her. I actually just saw this today. I was looking up some of your audiobooks, and you did the choice by Ashley Jade, so that's yeah. out May 9th. This book is so good. Oh my! I'm gosh, really excited for the audiobook of that one. <laughs> I love so Ashley good. Jade. I met mm -hmm. Ashley Jade for the first time at Vegas this last uh, last year. Whatever the last mm -hmm. Love in Vegas was, of November. October, I might have I, I might have met her like once or twice before at other various events, but I met her like where I was like Ashley Jade, and she was like Teddy Hamilton, and I was like, hey, <laughs> hung out and talked for a little while at a bar. That signing though, um, are you aware how long the line was to meet you at Vegas? Because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I did not meet you. Yes. I went there. I was like, I don't I, know. Really I, went, I went there too, and I was not able to get to go in the line. I mean, it was it was crazy. <laughs> That, you know, I went to um, Indies Invade Philly the year before, and that, and I saw it there too. That was a big one where there was a lot of just long, just a string. I mean, it was like, it was six hours long or something, and I never stopped signing for the entire six hours that we were there um, because there was just that many people. It's kind of fun, you know, what's, what used to be just go get your book signed by your author if it's a book that you also liked the the audiobook for, then it's like get the get the narrator's signature too, and it's like a fun little collection because now you have the author and you have you know the various narrators who worked yeah. on it too, and it's mm -hmm. a great yeah great little thing to have, I think. It is a signature because there are times like, especially with you, uh, when I f first read your audiobook, I was like, wow, this narrator is so good. I went on Audible and just searched Teddy Hamilton and <laughs> just listened to authors that maybe I wouldn't have necessarily noticed at first or picked up just because it was a narration that I liked. I was like, oh, no, I really vibe with this narrator. I'm going to just listen yeah. to everything. Oh, uh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. nice. Yeah, thank you. I, I, that's that's what happens with me sometimes too, where, where I have, you know, narrators, we have new to you authors also where like I have narrators who I've worked, I mean, authors who I've worked for or just on their books, uh, a, a bunch of them, you know, you'll see, but then there's sometimes where a book comes along and I'll be like, who is this author? Like if, if I want to put them on my yes, no matter what list, like if I get offered a book for them, I want to do it. I just did a book for, a woman named Saxon James. Do you guys know this? this I love person? Saxon James. <laughs> yeah, so I, she's great. She's great. Uh, I, I'd never heard of her before. I'd never, I didn't know who she was. She reached out to me personally. For the husband um, I hopes. think somebody helped her, possibly Tiffany Porter, um, helped her 
get connected to me, but I was like, Oh, sure. I got the space for it. You know, I'll do, I'll do a book for you. And it's the husband hoax and yeah. actually, <laughs> actually produced the whole thing. Like I, oh. I gathered the other narrator. Um, okay. and, you did a great job. I'm listening to it right now. Are you listening to it? It's great. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. the thing is like, it's like, then after that, I was like, she goes now into my catalog of, of people who like, I really enjoyed I really enjoyed the husband hoax. It was a really good book. And so, and I said, uh, she said, I have a couple others. And I was like, yeah, give them to me. I'll do them. Like they're so, they were really good. It's so hard. Cause sometimes when we're working with the, the, the industry itself, the whole audio book industry is like a mixture of publishers and indie people. And then just like studios who are working for, for publishers or indies and so my list of clients is so weird and eccentric that it's I don't always have a connection to the author there's there's you know it's it's I'm doing this job because Nick Martorelli at Penguin Random House has has given it to me you know what I mean so I don't have any connection to who the author is or what's going on I have no control over it other than that I'm going to say yes because it's Penguin Random House so they're going to you know um but but then there's these times when you're connected to the when it's from an indie author who's maybe retained their audio rights or something like that that then i get to work directly with them and that's that's pretty fun samantha did you want to share your favorite i know what that was a yeah. long segue from i know <laughs> i told you i warned you i just started talking <laughs> Once oh, i, I love it talking, it's good. this is the talk perfect away. job for me is to just yeah. talk incessantly <laughs> Um, so I kind of pick one, I pick three. <laughs> so the one I just listened to, uh, cause my library had it was without you by Marley Valentine. You did that with Tim Page. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, that one was so without good. Without you, right. That's and, what you're saying. Yeah. Sorry. I cut so out, but yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think I cut out for a second. Um, but yeah, I loved that one. That one was, that one was amazing. I was so yeah. happy that I found it. And I've never read anything by Marley Valentine either. So that was one yeah, of the she's ones. great that I read because I searched um, searched your name. Ah. And then another one that was random I found on Audible Original. It's technically like a novella that you did. It's called After the Fairy Tale. And that yeah. one was like a fully narrated novella. Everybody. Yeah, and there was, was a bunch of people on it, right? Yeah, a bunch of people. Yeah. And like you could even hear like the background noise of like if you guys were like in the kitchen and stuff. And I just thought that was such a fun time. Like it was such an immersive ex audiobook because totally. there were so many of you guys on there and I loved that one. Yeah. And then anything you do with Serena Bowen and L. Kennedy. <laughs> Serena Bowen and L. Kennedy. Yeah. Do you know Serena Bowen and L. Kennedy? I they all they are a big part of my life or at least in my like when I look at my career and my life and everything that's happened both of them and also um there's this author I never hear from her or about her really anymore but there was this author named Jen Frederick did mm -hmm. you know do you know that name mm -hmm. yeah. I did a book I produced for her in the early days where this this book called uh I mean this thing called ACX which is like an online like authors you can post your books up and then narrators who are trying to do stuff you know will go on and and they'll produce your book for you and it's just audible being like here we're just gonna set the stage and you guys do your audiobooks um and we'll take a big chunk of money off of that um <laughs> but well they're distributors so that's you know it's yeah, important but, yeah. but still it's like it's like they don't even have to do anything they just all they have to do is be a platform um but Jen Frederick, so I, it was like a long time ago, it was years and years ago that I did this book and it was really good. Um, and then, and then it was shortly after that, that then I did an L Kennedy book and, a, and then the Serena Bowen L Kennedy hymn book, which was sort of what launched Teddy into the mainstream of the world. Doesn't hurt that I had Jacob Morgan as my co-narrator. Um, it's hard not to. <laughs> I, uh, but but then like somewhere in there then i did an l kennedy jen frederick book and so then i thought mm -hmm. oh are they all like friends are they all working together or something but so i don't know i've never i've never pinned pinned that down or anything like that but there's always this 
there's these three names that's that stand out to me and it's Jen Frederick, it's L. Kennedy and it's Serena Bowen that uh, have always um, stuck out as like early boosts for me that that set yeah. me down a lot of cool paths that I maybe otherwise wouldn't have done without them. So, yeah, I think him and Top Secret were the first two that I read that you narrated. Yeah, yeah. that's I mean, Serena Bowen, me and Serena Bowen. I, I'm like friends with Serena Bowen now. We've worked plenty of times. I, I produced Top Secret also, actually. That one, one of the fun parts on that one was that I, there was a time when I had my own studio, like a separate studio in Hollywood that wasn't like a home studio. And so then I could also offer it to people to record in. And I had a lot of different narrators who would come in and use my studio and that one was was one that I did with for Serena, where I got the uh, Christian Fox to come, and I engineered for him. So I ran his recording for him, and then I went and I recorded my side of it. So I got to hear his whole performance first, and then do my side of it. So it's kind. Of, I did that with Jacob Morgan on a couple books too. So I got to cheat a little bit by. <laughs> hearing everything that they're doing and then just mold my my performance around what they did that's really cool you are like fully immersed in the audiobook world though then so you've engineered produced Ugh, narrated yeah. now you just have to write <laughs> now i just gotta write yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's 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 on it's there are there are stories i think that I just want to write. I just want to tell it. It's a, it's like I have ideas that I want to play with and there's no way to do it other than to write it. So I think, I think I will. And I've written some things in the past that like, I wrote like a script that uh, like a, a movie script that got a bunch of good nods from people who had read it. And I, I've written plays that did well but I've never written a book, but like my whole, you know, my whole family is writers. So I think, and I think also you can't really narrate a book without also thinking about the writing of the book, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Like I've, I've said this before, but when I'm narrating, I, I'm thinking the, the two most important things I'm thinking about when I'm narrating is the author, what the author was thinking, what things the author's playing with in their mind when they're writing this, why they're making their choices that they're making to tell these aspects of the story. Um, and then the and then the listener, what is the experience of hearing these moments? How do I take what the author's trying to do and make it so that the listener understands that? with as little of me inserting my own thing in between that. I can insert some color. I can insert some flavor to it to do that, but it has to start there with what the author's trying to do. I can maybe jazz it up a little bit if then that makes it better for the listener. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's, but those are the things that I'm usually, I'm usually thinking I'm trying to get into the mind of the of the author. Mm -hmm. So you can't do that unless you also have some element of understanding the writing process and understanding what is going on with an author's mind when they're writing. Mm -hmm. um, and this is also what I wanted to ask. Would it be a romance? Like what genre would you be interested in writing? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely okay. romance. <laughs> I've, I've, I've fallen in love with romance i think it's it, it's i you talk to my wife she's she actually rolls her eyes a lot at me but it's <laughs> it's like i'll be watching uh uh i had a big thing with um uh, robert downey jr you know the the avengers iron man yeah iron man, yeah you know the gigantic blockbuster movie um <laughs> there was this moment in the end of the avengers movie when he like flies a a nuclear bomb up through a wormhole into space and he's you know he's gonna he's making the big save play to like kill the bad guys 
And what here's the most epic moment of the movie. And what's the thing that he wants to do? The thing that he wants to do is he wants to call Gwyneth Paltrow and tell her, I'm sorry, I love you. Please forgive me for doing this kind of thing. And like, I'm getting teary eyed just talking about it. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's such a, you know, it's a dumb movie, but, but yeah. that kind of mm-hmm. stuff, it's at the heart of everything. Aaron, Aaron Mellon talks about this in, in, um, uh, these walls can talk. And it was my character that got to say a lot of this stuff, which was <laughs> that like across everything, what the thing that makes it human for any of us is the romance part of it. And if you can, you can write a, a military, you know, uh, you know, war movie or war book or something like that. But if he doesn't have some girl who's waiting for him at home or something, you know, if he doesn't, or if he just doesn't love his brothers in arms, you know, in these moments, that's the thing that makes it matter to any of us. And so, and that's what almost all romances are about it. In, in the end, there's cocks and pussies and all that kind of stuff too. But what's important and the thing that makes all of those things important is the, the, the way that they make us feel the way that the connections between the characters. So, so yes, it would 100% be <laughs> a romance. Wait, I think wait, also, wait. I'm sorry, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, if, 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 if I'm going to write something, you know, if, if I, I would, I don't know, I don't know audiences as well as I know romance audiences. Do you know what I mean? So I also would want to write books for people that I know. Like, if I was to suddenly write some like sci fi, I don't know any, I don't know what <laughs> sci fi people want to hear. You know, I don't want to, I don't know what stories are interesting to them, but I know romance you know and so that's that's who i would want to write for i think it's a great answer and cry yeah well i'll cry while i write it i cry when i'm narrating yeah, that's what I was going to ask because Tori yeah. asked it. Like, yeah, I was just that 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 too. Into Cry a lot. Like, <laughs> you get that invested to the books you're narrating and like feeling for the characters as well? Yeah, I, I will say I've been sad because I think in turning this into my job, in doing this so much, I've, I've become cold hearted a little bit <laughs> to, where, to where like you know, the first time the thing happens, the first time that I experienced longing or, you know, that, that feeling was like, you know, would bring me to total tears. But then like, then when I read another one and I read another one and I see similar situations happening, I'm like, oh yeah, this is happening and, and, and the only thing I can think is, oh, I remember when that happened to that other character, you know, and like, I still feel it and I still know it, but it doesn't quite bring me to tears as much as it used mm-hmm. to, which is then what, except Rebecca Yaros, except freaking Rebecca Yaros. But that's <laughs> like her whole thing. That's like what the she's trying letter? to do. Yes. <laughs> Balled my eyes out in this book for the last letter. <laughs> the last letter. Oh, my God. The last letter. Yes. <laughs> That one, I I have, actually, I have some, uh, I record, like, I saved some recordings of me <laughs> saying, just, you know, I just wanted to be like, you, uh, uh, fucking Christ, and like, just like going off, going off mic because, because I was, because I couldn't control myself. I was sobbing so hard while narrating it. And, you know. Uh, it's so it just made me. I had to go. I, so Rebecca Yarbs. <laughs> That's your one. <laughs> yeah. I need to go yeah. back now and listen to that audio because I read it as a paperback. Listen to that true emotion in the voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Victoria, do you have a favorite book? We haven't gotten to you yet. I have many. I made a list. You said you had three. I have a list. Um, I won't talk to all about all of them because the main one that I talk about literally like 
every single chance that I can mention it is Him and Us, yeah. one of my favorite yeah. books ever. And all of Serena Bowen's books. I know that you do all of her like MM ones. So I just read The New Guy, listened to The New Guy, and I yeah. loved that one. Um, and then I know that you do um, The Last on the List and Sweeper by Amy Dawes. Yeah, yeah. Loved both of those. Yeah. And then uh, Chasing Her Fire and Hidden Miles by Claire Kingsley. Oh, yeah. Great. I love Hidden so Miles. Funny. That's a ways. That was a ways back, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's an old one. <laughs> but that one's also been on the. I remember because that one pops up every once in a while. I peruse my audible page uh just to just to keep track of what have i what have i done um but but hidden miles is like always kind of still up there in the like featured or (laughs) yeah that one was good but i was like young too i was younger in that one so i i think i sound younger too it's great (laughs) she did a great job (laughs) yeah that one was good i remember that one Mm -hmm that's so funny i don't know it's so hard you know it's it's because there's there are i looked today just to see what was out there to see just to prep myself to see what we might talk about and there's i'm at 600 books on the roster for teddy hamilton and then under andrew i do a i do romance under andrew too um, sometimes I, I tend to try and catch them all under Teddy, but there's sometimes ones that come in under Andrew and Andrew's got almost 300. And so then I'm like almost, almost to a thousand. thousand books. I was going to ask, like, how do you catalog that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but then you say things like, you know, you, when you bring up some book, it's, I can't always guaranteed that I will remember every book you know it depends on where I was at or what I was how I was feeling when I was narrating it Mm -hmm. to see if it stuck with me but there's also like these times when then people will say oh you know I love this one and I go like oh yeah that's the one that's the one where the guy was like living across the street from her right and they were like yeah 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 Birthday girl, that's another one. Yeah, that's Andrew. This is under um, Andrew. I didn't know that you did this one. Oh my god, I didn't know that that was. Oh my god, I have to. I should listen to Birthday Girl as a reread on audio. Well, that's you know, <laughs> yeah. it's because I also earlier on in my career, I didn't know how to separate myself from like this whole branding thing of Teddy Hamilton. So then there was a time when I was like, well, if it's straight erotica, just like boning down every chapter then i'll do it as teddy and then if it's more you know just more love with maybe a slow burn or something like maybe some sex at the end then i'll do that under andrew but then i was like it still then becomes i started to get problems where i was like i did one that actually was more romantic and less erotic under teddy and i did one that was more erotic and less Mm -hmm. romantic under andrew so then i said well I can't keep track of it. I don't know how to do it. So I said, I'll just anything that's any kind of romance at all, just give it to Teddy because he's the guy who who people know anyway. He's the he's oh, the yeah. one that this particular community of listeners trusts that name. So just do that and, and then they'll know, okay, this is narrated by Teddy Hamilton, which actually means something nobody knows who andrew Eden is nobody cares who andrew Eden is <laughs> teddy is like the voice of romance so Teddy's the voice for sure. Yeah. for sure yeah for sure um i had three but i'm gonna save the one i really want to talk about for last which i did tell you i was gonna ask you about it but mm-hmm. um it just came out recently powerless by elsie silver so so yeah, good yeah, this yeah, was yeah. with jay bloom <laughs> i love that cover too that's a gorgeous so cover Yes. Beautiful. This is just the, the discreet cover. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Um, Little Lies by H. Hunting or yeah. Helena Hunting. Yeah. Love this one. And then the one that I know is getting so much buzz right now because it's going viral everywhere and it's dark. And I wanted yeah. to ask you about your experience dark with dark hell. romance. Haunting Adeline. Haunting Adeline. <laughs> boat. So, you go favorite. from being like the good boy, the yeah. like wholesome to Zayn Meadows. Um, so, <laughs> what is your 
experience doing dark romance because you also do Pam Godwin and that's very dark as well. Yeah, we love yeah. dark romance. What Pam Godwin mm-hmm. ones have you done? Do you remember? Because I've listened to all of her books on audio. Why can't I remember? No, it's the one. It was the Deliver. one where. Oh, you no, did it's the- not Deliverance. It's Deliver. Yes, Deliver. Yeah, it's Deliver. It's. Oh, that uh, was on Deliver. Yes, it was. My God. See, I listen to a lot. So people get mixed up. But that was you. That's a great audio book. And there was a follow up to that one too, I think, or maybe it was. It's a whole series, yeah. Yeah, but but I was on some like maybe like a collection of everybody then mm-hmm. type of book, but yeah, you know, there's <laughs> all right. So, dark romance <laughs> is interesting. There's this there's this one thing that Tiffany Porter I think put on her tiktok which was like get on your fucking knees or something like that it was something that like i i I said it in some way that she was like oh and i think i'm a generally pretty easygoing guy and i'm a you know i'm nice i'm a nice man um but the reason why we you know write these things or listen to these things or read them or just enjoy them is because there's you know there's all sorts of vibes in the world and and we have we are we are a collection of all of these different feelings and you know there might be dark moments in the sweetest small town romance you know when Mm -hmm. somebody's mad about something or when everything's going wrong and they're trying to grab it so then when you get into the dark romances it's like it's it's that the entire time because Mm -hmm. of wherever they're starting at wherever their starting place is um so it's in me it's in all of you it's in everybody (laughs) listening to this right now and those books are ones that take that and expand on it um Mm -hmm. i will say there's this it can be hard it, it can be hard because some of those places are particularly dark and they're places that maybe it does live within all of us, but we don't really look at it too often because we don't want to because um, it's scary or it's, um, I don't know. I don't know what, but the thing that's kind of fun is that a an author writing those kinds of books is almost like a mad scientist, like, creating this little maze of thoughts and feelings that then you guys as the listeners get to kind of like watch that happen and like feel those feelings and see it play out for them. But the thing that's hard for the narrator or an actor in a, in a movie like that is we have to be the mouse. We have to be the ones who are actually going through the thing. You know, yeah. the author is writing these characters Oh, oh, hey, I'll, I'll have him say this or do this and we'll see how that feels. Yeah, that'd be a thing. And then the listeners, oh my God, I can't believe he said that. For for the narrator, I have to like not only be the one saying it, but also like find that place within me that wants to say that or do that thing. And so I, with Haunting Adeline, and uh, uh, the, the the hunting one, mm-hmm. hunting Adeline. I remember being like, "Fuck it, like just go for it, like just do, just give it, give it what it wants, and and fuck it." You know what I mean? Like that's <laughs> that's the way that I felt about it, as opposed to like worrying about. Oh, I don't know what the, how I feel about this. Nah, fuck it. And I just went as hard into it as I could. And then that has been, uh, I guess it's given it what it wanted. You know, it's, it's given the, (laughs) the the book what it wanted. Um, But that's, but so I kind of had to be crazy a little bit. I kind of had to be crazy. I had to get real dark in it to do that. Like, just, but like, hug my wife you know next time you see her because <laughs> she was there when i was <laughs> when i was doing it so i'm not like a i'm not like a what do you call those actors who are um method actor yeah i'm not a method actor i'm not like going home 
all right, we're gonna do this now. Um, <laughs> I mean, like, I, I have to stop you for a little bit. I have to really get into character. Let me yeah, yeah. Talk for a second. And then... yeah. You just start running. Um, <laughs> yeah. I just did another one like that. Uh, I just finished it yesterday. Um, where it's the bully romance. It's more bully romance. It's not. It's not the same thing but this the the chasing thing is like gets everybody excited you better run so good (laughs) so monica did ask do you have any limits for accepting books to narrate i was i did a little research and looked at some interviews and you said you don't like to do like back to back to back dark you like to spread that out yeah that's that's the only thing i don't have any limits but there i have i have been in times where it was like yeah where it was back to back and like i just got like depressed or something like i just you know i just lived in that dark world too much it's nice mm-hmm. to live in it and then go to a nice love you maine and where you you know where everybody <laughs> loves each other and, and there's a yeah. and there's a kooky aunt and you know <laughs> and the the bakery is so nice and you know I like that. I did this book. I did this book recently where it was is called Coming Home. I think. Oh, hold on, Coming Home. Anyway, well, whatever. There's a book. It's either Homecoming or Home or Coming Home. I think it was Coming Home, but it was uh, it was it followed this love story between a a guy and a girl. But then the girl, her like aunt was in a, a retirement home and and she was this very dignified older you know elderly woman but then there was also this like elderly man at the romance I mean at the retirement home who like decided he wanted to you know take this girl out and you know it's like but they're like 80 um, and it was like a whole section of the book it was like it was it was like almost just as much of the romance story as as the main characters um, and it was, you know, kind of juxtaposed between the two that you saw that the way that they were and the way that they were. But I remember thinking it's so lovely. It's so, you know, it's like so wholesome and nice. <laughs> it's nice to have those two. I think I'd probably want to vomit if that was all I read too. <laughs> if it was just nothing but sweet, 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 you know, it'd be like, blah, give me some, give me some blood. But um but yes, variation is key, I think. Mm-hmm. When you're narrating, is there ever a moment, like with your more popular ones, like him, uh, Haunting Adeline, where you're like, oh yeah, this is going to be it? Or is it kind of just as surprising to you as to what books get very popular within the romance community? That's a good question. Like, I don't know. Cause I don't know, like I, there are books, cause there are books that I go like, wow, this, this book is great. And I never hear about it again. Mm. And then there's other books where I'm like, all right, well, that one's done. And then everybody loves it. And I go like, <laughs> all right, well, I don't know what, I don't know where the bar is always. Yeah. It's one of the things that terrifies me about writing is, is the idea of like, you know, I have no idea what's going to hit for who. Um, mm-hmm. but it, that's when then you get into like, I don't know, was it marketed well? Like, mm-hmm. was the author somebody that anybody knew? Did I, you know, it's like there's other elements that go into what makes a book hit. But what I do know is when I say, when I leave it and I say, that book was good, that book was very well written, and I mm-hmm. enjoyed working on it. Nice. So, I that's that's all I think about. I never. There's sometimes when they're when they're surprised. Um, Hunting Adeline. I mean, to be honest, Hunting Adeline and Hunting Adeline. Uh-oh. You okay? Technical Hello. difficulties. <laughs> ah, there you are. Okay, you're back. Okay. Let me close for a second. Um, uh, those that one that one had a. I had a lot of stuff in it that I wasn't sure how people were going to react to it. Mm. Cause that one was probably the darkest one I've ever done. Mm-hmm. Um, that, 
I was like, well, we'll see. And then people, people seem to really like it. So, Mm -hmm. you know, deliver, this is a, this is just a side note for the, for deliver was that was with Abby Creighton. That was my co-narrator on that book. Mm -hmm. And I've always loved Abby Creighton. She's a, she's another narrator. She's, she's uh, an amazing woman. And she's actually like, so before I even started narrating or like I'd done a book, but then that got me into engineering for a studio in Los Angeles, in Los Angeles. And I, the first romance books that I ever did that I ever engineered for were being narrated by Abby Creighton and I think it's Feehan, Chris, Crystal Feehan. Christine Feehan. Christine Feehan. And it was like vampires or something. I think it was it was sort of close to like post-Twilight time, you know, when vampires were all the rage and, you know, blood bonding and, you know, whatever, <laughs> all that stuff. Going on. <laughs> and, uh, and it was, and Abby Creighton was reading it and I'd never listened to or had any experience with any kind of romance or erotica but then it was like abby creighton and she's a great narrator and she's a cool woman and i was just like okay uh hi abby let's can we can we go back to to the start of the 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 paragraph you know i was like sweating um because i you know because it was like i'd never i'd never experienced you know some of the more graphic details um and so then to be like alone in a room with a beautiful woman who was reading it to me i was like um it was a whole it was a whole experience for me but so and then so then years and years later when then teddy was matched up with abby creighton for deliver and also she was like yeah and i'm gonna bind you it wasn't that was that one was kind of flipped where it wasn't it was i was the I was the one, uh, I was the slave. I was like, for Abby Creighton, I would do it. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. But it was also kind of like a fun little, like, I don't know, roundabout kind of come full full circle circle moment. moment. Yeah. 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 You you mentioned your co narrators uh, quite a bit. Is there so again going back to the Avengers? I know like the original Avenger actors have like an Avenger group chat. Is there like a narrator group chat that you guys are all just like pouring <laughs> into? I have I have I have um I have one that is uh, a specific narrator group chat between me Emma Wilder and Jacob Morgan that I don't mind saying, but it says on the group chat, what what happens in this group chat stays in this group chat. That's the, <laughs> that's the name of our group chat. I love um, it. So it's just like a good place for us to just whatever, say whatever we want to say. Yeah. Nice, nice. That's so cute. That's funny. I love that. Um, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, I was just saying, I bet there's a lot of group chats. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh i'm sure yeah yeah i mean i'm and there's 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 some that are connected to projects mm-hmm. that then kind of fall by the wayside after a while mm-hmm. um but like like again aaron mellon keeps coming up aaron mellon yes. is great aaron mellon's one of my best friends and she her her uh, you know these walls can talk was a bunch of us who we all worked together so often and in such a fun way that that there's a group chat that although that's an email that's not a that's not a text chat an email chain yeah an email chain, <laughs> email chain. <laughs> that's funny. uh i do like to ask this one every time so monica brought it up are there any specific words that will trip you up when you narrate them like no matter what i don't know of any recent i think i maybe have gotten over it <laughs> in time but the, you know what happens is there was one that a little little used to screw me up for some reason and i have no idea i had like too much tension in my jaw or something where where the the word little would 
I would I would end up going like just a little and like oh, oh, oh. like I would it would like get lost somewhere in the back of my mouth and I couldn't I could never get it out for some reason. Huh. Yeah. Little. Little. I know it seems like such a simple <laughs> word, but it's that it's that because you don't say little. We're not like we're not British people. So we don't say little. We say little. And so it's actually you say little 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 where it's like my the tip of my tongue hits hits my my hard palate but then like the side of my tongue makes the d click kind of does that make little say little yeah. and and an, analyze what your tongue is doing in that moment little i or that maybe that's just the way that i say it and that's why i get caught up in it little you don't say little you say little so there's this little oh, whatever anyway you know what i'm saying it's like it gets yeah. and 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 for some reason it would i think tension probably not being comfortable or something would make me then not be able to say it i feel like that's a really common word too that's probably oh, yeah. difficult I know. Yeah. Yeah. How many times Dade says "little mouse" and haunting Oh yeah, that's funny. That also, I was just saying that it's like you are the mouse, but that's I forgot that. Then in that book, I call mm -hmm. her little mouse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Zade, man, Zade was. You know, it was that he was a man with very specific purpose he was a man who knew exactly what he wanted and he and he could get anything done that he wanted to get done um and that's attractive like and like his his call was an honorable call there he is <laughs> what does that say it's the cat and mouse <laughs> oh, oh it's called the cat i don't think i knew that I don't think I knew the cat yeah, and mouse so, duet. Did you not know it's called the cat and mouse duet? Yeah. No, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. This is what you. This is what he looks like. If you didn't know. Oh <laughs> uh, yes. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. I see. I see a likeness there. <laughs> <laughs> Twin. <laughs> That's so funny. We yeah. Um, was... but we did. Oh, do you want to continue? I don't have anything. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I usually ask first, and we just like completely skipped over it. How did you even get into audiobook narrating? So it's been almost a decade. I know you have some acting background. Yeah. I, it's, it was a long journey. I, I, yeah, I started as an actor. I was like a theater actor since I was four. I studied acting in college. I was, I got my first agent and was doing like the, commercials and tv stuff since i was like 11 so i was like a kid actor wow. and it's kind of hard to 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 grow up as a kid actor because because i'm like you know 25 years old and they're still sending me out for parts for like 14 year olds and mm -hmm. like i'm not gonna get that part i don't know why you're sending me out like you should start looking at me as an adult but it's hard for the agents to make that transition it's hard for all of the casting directors who have known you as a cute little kid so then like my my acting career kind of like dried up in that regard but I still couldn't have a good job because I needed to leave myself open for to go and audition for things that I wasn't right for and at some point my sister who's an actress she started doing audiobooks and uh and the the studio dion audio uh came to her wedding and i and i i uh emceed her wedding reception so i basically entertained the, these producers on a microphone for like four hours so then they came up and they were like hey you should come in and audition for us and i was like eh. and i never really got around to it because i was kind of done with the acting game and then at some point i did they had some part they said audition for this one book and i said okay so i auditioned for it and it was a harper book and i got it and so then i recorded it and it was fun and then at the time i was working as a theater tech for the griffith observatory in los angeles and they said and she said wait you know how to do like computery stuff and i was like yeah i know how to do computery stuff and 
So then she hired me to be an engineer. But then even that, I really wasn't doing audiobooks that often. I would get them every once in a while, but I was working as an engineer, but like the pay sucked and, you know, I didn't like it all that much. So then I left that job and I got a job in entertainment rigging, working on like construction sites and like doing that. And I actually loved that work um, because it was so different from what my whole life had been. And there's a lot of those guys that I that used to be on the cruise that I would work on. Like I became, I used to, I used to run crews of like union iron workers and things like that. Like that was that, that feeds into this work now, but even then the money still wasn't that good. And I was working, you know, 10 hours a day hauling steel out in the sun and like it sucked. And at some point I realized that I had done enough audiobooks that I had like a kind of a nice little resume for myself in audio. And I said, you know, and this was possibly post him actually, I'm not sure. But, but then I said, you know, fuck it. If I can get like, if I can just do just that, I like that work. That's kind of fun. And so I said, if I can do the, just that work, if I can get enough clients to send me to send me enough, I can make more than I'm making hauling steel for ten hours a day. Um, and then all of a sudden, what I didn't realize was that it was ready for me. Like the the industry was about to boom, I and they liked what I did. I just wasn't really pursuing it. It wasn't something that I had been pursuing. So, you know as soon as I started pursuing it, people were like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. You're great. Here, here's a book. Do it. And then, and then all of a sudden I, I ended up with more work than I could possibly deal with. So like, yeah, I started in 2012, but I would say between 2012 and like 2016, maybe 17, somewhere in there. I, I wasn't really, I wasn't really, an audiobook narrator you know i would yeah. do it on occasion but yeah once i started once i started actually pushing then it was like it blew up in my face then covid happened so i had i had i had my own studio i was talking to you about that i, I built my own studio with a, a buddy of mine um and so we had our own space i didn't have to go to anybody else's studio to do work and then covid happened when COVID happened, then the amount of work that I had like quadrupled because mm -hmm. all the, all the other narrators who didn't have home studios or didn't have their own recording spaces couldn't go to the studios. So mm -hmm. all those studios got like screwed real bad during, during COVID because nobody could, could record in, in their studios. Meanwhile, people like me who I have my own space, were getting all this dump off work where, other narrators had to cancel and couldn't do the job. They'd be like, well, now somebody needs to record it. Andrew, you're right. You do it. Mm -hmm. And so then I ended up taking on and, and it, and it hasn't really gone down since then. Yeah. Like I, I, I went from working a lot throughout the week to like every, like after I'm done with this live, I need to get back to work. Kind <laughs> of work i can crazy. imagine you're just flooded with requests yeah yeah and it's and it's good but i you know it's like what happens is is that then people i feel bad about it because because then somebody says hey i really want you to read this book or hey i have this author who is specifically requesting you mm -hmm. like I can fit it in in January 2024 like yeah you know like I'm sorry and and then and then also one thing I try to do and I do this for you guys to be honest is sometimes then they'll be like hey book 2 of this series has come out and so then rather than making cuz there's been a couple books where like I just stuck it in you know a year later practically where then people are like the book came out. I listened to the book. So now I guess I'll listen to the audio, but you don't get that same, you know, as a, as a simultaneous release would, would give mm -hmm. you. 
And so then I, I leave space open for like last minute things sometimes. And that what takes that up is a lot of times it's where it's book two in the series. And I want to make sure that, it, that at least I get it somewhere close to their release date. Um, yeah. I'm so sorry to do this. Are, uh, I, I see that we're close to the end, but I'm about to pop because I need to use the restroom. Uh, <laughs> really can okay. you hang out for like two seconds and I'll be right back? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Talk, talk, talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> okay, we All will. Right. We will. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. He has that's his home studio. That's so cool. That is awesome. I think really her awesome. her studio too, which was really cool. Wow. We need like a tour of all these narrators' home studios. I know. Um, that's that's cool. Really cool. That's crazy. Yeah. At least you but know he works at home every day. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I can't even imagine what it was like for the times when the people had to be in the booth at the same time those booths are so tiny i mean you said mariana's pot on i'm like that's a long book yeah <laughs> you mean Callie Dalton <laughs> in that tiny little studio oh, together for the whole time. Next that's a long time yeah and all of mari i don't know no he didn't do all of mari mariana's um, audio books i wonder but- how they did like reverse harem full cast books yes. when you had to be in a studio yes yeah mm-hmm. that's crazy that would be i mean because they've done these walls can talk at the same time yeah like the uh, aaron mallon where there's like six of them so i don't know though yeah, i don't know how you like you think can kind of, after covid everything changed i mean in Gondola, yeah. the movie disney movie was filmed like via zoom yeah right, right. i don't even know how you like get that many people it must be very confusing to like have like six seven people yeah, and then have to produce that with that many people. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Sorry. Hello. Everyone loves the studio, the at-home studio. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. My studio? Yeah. Yeah. There's my window. <laughs> and beautiful. here's here's the four walls. Hold it's on. so tiny. It's so it's small. so tiny. It's so tiny. <laughs> and then here's my recording space wow that's cool it's a teeny you, tiny little space have a screen or do you have like an actual paper script do you have both no no, no i have a i have an ipad okay currently mm-hmm. being occupied by this <laughs> someone else told me that like if you have an actual book you'd hear the pages turning right so that's what you have to use yeah they, back in the back in the old days they used to have to say pause while they so they'd be recording and they'd be reading and then and also they didn't punch in where they would just record the whole thing on like a reel to reel and um and they would say pause turn the script (laughs) and then they would continue there's probably a lot of editing oh yeah and also on reel to reel so it was like actual cutting like once like pro tools came along and and the digital audio workstations and um then that changed everything because also now we do a thing called punch in there's two different ways of recording you can do a punch recorder you can do a roll record and a roll record is i say i i i ran out the door and i walked straight into the store and i bought myself some cheerios um it's a great book by the way um (laughs) and maybe i messed that up and i say i i slammed out the door and i i slammed out the door and i went to the store and i bought myself some cheerios you would just keep, you would just like stop yourself and go back and then just start again at the sentence. But now with roll record, I'm, what we have to do is we say, we, we stop and go back and punch and click in and then start recording from that point. So that then when it gets sent to the editor, the editor just has the book as it should be mm-hmm. instead oh. of all these different takes that they have to edit out. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's probably a lot easier and faster for the editor. Way faster, yeah. Yeah, I use a Neumann <laughs> ELM one hundred and three. It means nothing <laughs> to me. But Tori likes my. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure assuming that's a, a really. Good <laughs> it was a really good. Ma- I mean, I've had it for now. I don't know, maybe at least 
probably not the full 10 years because I didn't get it right away, but I'd say I probably had it for <coughs> maybe the, certainly the better part of five years, maybe seven years or so. Wow. Um, and it's still, it's still okay. churning. Every once in a while I look at it and I go, are you still doing okay? Like, <laughs> <get a> <laughs> No complaints for any of the new stuff, so yeah. sounds good. Um, but we are at an hour. Um, so as a last question, um, yes. is there any book that's really stood out to you that you think more people should read that you might not hear people talking about? God. Out of the thousand that you, <laughs> you've narrated. <laughs> um yeah. Or something you've recently done that's really exciting to you. It'll be easy okay. To yeah. Yeah. There was one. I'm not sure if I did it as Andrew or as Teddy. I don't remember. But it was called uh, You Shouldn't Have Come Here. Have you heard of this book at all? No. Um, hold on. Let me I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, I'm looking <laughs> it up right now. Pull it okay, up. You, you look it up and I'll just tell you why I think it. <laughs> It's this, it's another one of those, it's, it's one of those ones where it's like a twist. There's like twists in it where what you, what you think is happening isn't necessarily what's happening. Is it the Rose one? Is that yeah. the Rose? Yeah. Oh, okay. That one. Yeah. Um, that book was crazy and I loved it. I did it with, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Um, a lot of five stars on Goodreads, like a lot of five stars. That's because it's good. It was a, and it was, and it was like, it's like fucked up too. That's the other <laughs> thing that's great about it. And I did it with Andy Arndt, who yeah. I love her and I don't do too many books with her. So it was fun. But I remember, uh, this is my first, but what's her name again? Rose, Virginia Rose? Geneva Rose. Geneva, Geneva Rose. Rose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd never, I've only, uh, this is my first book ever doing anything with her, but I remember thinking like, while I, while I was narrating it, I was thinking, I want this to have kind of like, um, like replayability to where if you listen to it one time, you'll have that experience of it but then if you went and listened to it a second time you would have a totally different experience listening to it mm -hmm. and i remember thinking that while i was reading it because because all of the elements were there and there were things that i could do that would allow for that to where like if you're just listening to it for the first time you're you're going to hear it one way but after you go through the whole book if you were to then go back and listen to it again, just because you you felt like it, you would hear it differently. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to put those layers in, in a sneaky way so <laughs> that you wouldn't hear it. But then if you, if you knew, then you would hear it. And mm -hmm. it was, I don't know. I like walked away from it being like, I liked that experience. I liked I liked the book. I liked the story. I liked the characters. I liked imagining what Andy would do with it. And I also, I liked what I did with it. And I don't usually, um, I don't usually care all that much what I do with it. You know what I mean? Like most of yeah. it, most of it I'm thinking is like, what I'm saying is like, that was a moment when I actually, I made some choices of my own in hopes of, making your experience as a listener better in hopes of highlighting what the thing she's done with the book, Geneva Rose. Um, so that one was a pretty cool one. You shouldn't have come here. I just remember that one being making me think. Cool. I'll add it to the list. About April 25th. I just placed a hold it with my library for it. So <laughs> I'm gonna listen. We should get a cut for this. The Rose Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll go I'll use Audible credit too. I'll go on Audible. Um, but that is that was a great recommendation. Thank you. That was a great way to end. Um, thank you so so much for chatting with us. That was a lot of fun. We learned so much about your process, about the dark romances how you started mm -hmm. that was fun so thank you so yeah, so much for your, joining 
keep your eyes out for uh, my first uh, my first writing foray. Yes. Um, yes. I'm yes. thinking like maybe 2045. I'll <laughs> have something written and ready to go. We'll get ready to cry. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I'll just cry while I'm writing. <laughs> I'm about to do it. I'm about to do another Rebecca Yaros book, also that I'm just like <laughs> getting myself ready for. Mentally prepare. Uh, all right. Well, thank you so much for joining, and we will see everybody later. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye.